Hello everybody, welcome to week 12. Today I am here, Christine Hanks with Dave Hall, owner of Seller Size, and we are gonna spend some time focusing on our neck, the upper shoulder, the middle back, the lower back, and talking about the back and how to make it healthier for those of us that may be having problems. And so that's what our main focus today is. We'll have questions and answers, but then we'll focus in on that. We've gone ahead and started putting it in this horizontal frame. We're just hoping that people can let us know if they're seeing us correctly. We, it's a much wider than we've had in the past, so if you'll just give us a thumbs up on whether you can hear us well and whether you can see us okay or if we're standing too far away. We just wanna have that come in from those of you watching us. Otherwise, while we're waiting for those to come in, we're gonna go ahead and start with some testimonials. Do you wanna go ahead and start with those for us today? Let's do it. I wanna say hi to everybody. I hope you've had a great experience with Seller's Eyes so far. For those of you who are advocates or avid users of the Seller Sizer, feel free to share and support the others that are involved with Seller Size. For those who are new, um, you know that Seller Size is weight bearing, it's not weight lifting. And if you don't know that, you wanna go to our website, read a little bit about it, because this is not like your typical exercise program at all. It's a whole different way of thinking. I had somebody call me up today and say, how come you don't have these in health clubs? And I said, because it's a whole different mindset. Nothing wrong with health clubs, nothing wrong with targeting the body as muscle groups and body parts, that's okay. Cellar size doesn't do that. It treats the body as a whole and it's weight bearing on the entire body as a whole. So yes, let's read some of the testimonials and I wanna say thank you for all of you who have called, who have been so supportive and who have been willing to share some of your experience with some of the others. So thank you very much. This is from Robin. She says, I can't believe how quickly my body responds to cellar sizing. I've had serious pain in my shoulder and neck for months. I started doing what was outlined in weeks 10 and 11. That's on our Facebook program. It says, I believe, weeks 10 and 11, I believe. And my pain is so much less and no longer wakes me up every time I move in bed. Cellar sizing is my play in and my rehab that works. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dave Hall. I'm beyond happy. 10 to 14 minutes a day, what a difference. Thank you for sharing, Robin. And Roxanne says, yes, Dave Hall, I am an, I'm on oxygen and have been since March of 2014. And I use my cellar sizer that arrived two years ago every day. Now I'm strong enough to use it without my oxygen for a time. I don't get excessive or crazy, but I do a plethora of movements, but often just walking, bouncing in place. I want to move my lymphatic system so that the detoxification process continues and I continue to heal and regenerate because the doctors have told me it won't happen. I know different. Bless you for all you do and thank you. And you know, it starts with that belief and the recognition that our body is made up of intelligences that know how to create, maintain, and heal the body. We just need to learn how to work more effectively with them. And in an upcoming program, we'll talk more about the lungs, how to open up the lungs more effectively, how to strengthen the lungs and activate the lymphatic pump in the upper cavity. And that is a program that I discovered for me, for me personally. I have since shared it with a great many people and people that have had asthma or um, hay fever and other issues, that increase of lymph uh, flow and oxygen has been very effective. Okay, so we have a, a, a an, let me see if I can get my English correct. Maybe I'm not speaking it right. Kathy, who called in last week, has an update. So I just oh. wanted you to read her quick little update right there. Oh, Kathy, thank you again. She was on a couple weeks ago and was willing to share her story. And thank you for writing it. Catherine says, follow up on my knee and medial meniscus tear. Went to physical therapy for insurance purposes today, and it was a joke. My knee is so strong due to my intentional rebounding. No brace and walking, stare, standing in f at work for eight hours in an operating room. Life is better with the rebounder and your instructions, David Hall. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing it, Catherine. Okay. So I've been seeing a lot of people come up here. We're so excited to have you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And Kathy, we were just talking about you in case you missed it. Uh, she just came on. We're going to go ahead and we had someone come on and ask us about Oh my word, how do I get this trifold back into this bag? So
So we're going to actually show you today how to take it out, set it up, and put it back in the best quickly. way. Okay? Yes. And quickly. And, and, I, and I want to thank you for bringing up the questions so that we can give you the answers. So please keep them coming. But here's a trifold. It's a, it's a new unit. We took it out of the packaging. But to open it up, you know how to do that. Real simple. You grab the unit. Just pop it open. Put the legs in place. Okay, so I'm going to pretend I'm going to seller size for a few moments. I've done my seller size program, exercise workout, and now I want to put it away. So you pick it up. Lay it back down. Now a new cellar sizer is going to be a little stiffer than a, a broken in cellar sizer. But I stand on it, I lift the legs up about an inch, fold them over. You can either put your knee next to the right, left of the hinge, or if you're flexible enough you can just stand on it. Just give it a little tug. Fold it in thirds. I take it this is a part that's going to go on the bottom of the carrying case. So I'm going to flip it over and just set it in right like that. If the springs on the new unit are sticking up a little bit on the back or the front, it can be a little harder to close the carrying case. So if you reach in and you grab the mat, give it a little tug, where they might be sticking up, then they fold over and you can zip it up, put it away, put the balance bar in there and you're ready to go. I hope that helps. All right. Okay. I know we're going to do a special on lungs, but somebody had just popped in when you were saying that last little piece and will the lung exercises will do in a special help with COPD. Um, it will, it will challenge your lungs. I believe it can strengthen them and actually help lungs grow. Mine did, and the doctors were amazed at how long my lungs had become. So it's a literal exercise, just as if you were exercising a muscle. But now we're exercising the lungs. And in the process of exercising the lungs, we're also having to clear out toxins and poisons stimulate circulation which helps to reduce inflammation and promote the healing process. Now if you have COPD it's, it's important to check with your doctor or health practitioner let them know what, what you're thinking of doing because I don't know your condition and we don't want to create more inflammation we want to reduce it. We want to help strengthen and open up the lungs. So this, it's done very very gently to begin with. And then as they get stronger and as they open up and as you start clearing things out, which is very common, um, they'll feel better. But it can take a week, two weeks, three weeks in some cases for, those really for it to really make a difference. And I've never seen anybody do an exercise like it. So. Okay, so two updates. We just had somebody ask because now they've seen the rug again. So they're asking on the status of the rug. Okay. We're working on it. Yes, we are. We are truly working on it. We actually had a manufacturer that came in with a few samples. And why don't you go ahead and tell them what they came yeah, in with. Yeah, let me, let me ask you a question. Um, this unit right here, this, this mat, this rug, it cost me over $800. No one is going to buy a rug like that for $800 and nor should they. I did find a company that can produce it for it was I I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it was about a hundred and what did I say 150 150 dollars at the most yeah yeah it was about like 150 dollars that's similar to this one right here that same kind of quality that's a quality one and then we found another one that they could produce and it was like 55 60 dollars but it was more of a foam type mat so you might want to let us know what you think would be better. We should have samples of them available in a few months. Um, we're working out all the details right now, but that's it. everything that we do is a lengthy process. So we're, we're bringing you up to speed or kind of involving you as we go through the process. But uh, 
the one that's the foamy mat, and I don't have the material in front of me, I wasn't expecting the question, but next week I will show you the samples of what we'll have. And then I'll put a poll out there and okay. we can see what they, they say oh, they would like the good. best, what, what sure. puts in the best, and we'll get your opinion on that. Right, because I have to buy them in quantity and I need to, I need to know what would be better, what, what you would prefer. The, uh, the better quality one's gonna last for years. The lesser quality one, my concern is that when the feet are on it, it, it'll leave little indentations in it, and that's fine, but I'm concerned it might rub off the top part of it over time. Yeah. We don't know, so we'll, we'll try. We'll try both of them. Okay, and then this slimline bar. It's not available online, but they can get that by calling in and ordering that. When will right. that be available online? Um, in, in about two weeks. Okay, so that should be coming on there. And so if you want to get that slimline bar, just give us a call here. Yeah, we have limited quantities, side. limited quantities of it right now. And we don't want to put it on our website because they'll be gone like that. And we want to make it available for those who are participating, uh, at least initially, and until we get a, a larger quantity available. Okay, how about the app? Yeah. It's been asked on there and I it's know. been asked here. <laughs> Well, one of the technicians that was working on it was on vacation last week. He's going to be in touch with me on Wednesday to give me an update. And so I'll know more on Wednesday. As to, uh, they're working on it. I got another revision of it today, but it's the website that we're working on. And I work on Wednesday or Thursday with the webmaster to find out how everything is being coordinated and worked on. And I'll, I'll have another update uh, on Monday. All righty, Kay. So here's our questions. We'll get to some of these. There's an awful sure. lot today. Um, if okay, I don't answer them all, we'll quickly. get them all answered all right. at some point, okay? Alrighty, I have a question. Once in a while, my right knee feels like it's going to hyperflex. Do I just take it easy or wrap it? And mm -hmm. she is doing the knee exercises, so. Yeah, yeah, in fact, wearing a wrap on it for additional support while you're building up the muscles and ligaments on a cellar sizer, great idea, absolutely. Okay. Some of these are going to be for the back. We've had a lot of questions come in for sciatica, all kinds okay. of things with the back issues next. So if you ask, ask one of those questions, we'll get to that towards the end here. Okay. So I'm just going to skip over some of those. When doing the jumbo run on the cellar sizer, should your feet be pointed straight forward or pointed outward to 10 and 2 o'clock? This is a good question. It's, it's, if you can keep the knees over your toes more while you're doing it, that's going to give more structure and strength in a, in a natural position. Um, if you want to move your feet out, then you'll have a tendency to build more on the inside of the knee and it's, um, you'll probably walk more that direction. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of like in the martial arts where they, they have you keep your feet um, straight ahead. You're pushing your knees out a little bit. If you can be aware of that, you're going to strengthen the alignment over the toes of your foot better than you would if you did it the other way. Okay. All righty. Another brand claims 10 minutes rebounding equals 30 minutes of running. Do you agree? Dr. Paul E. DeVore did a study and published his findings in the journal of Bariatric Physicians where he showed that at equivalent levels of basic oxygen uptake, you could burn calories 11 times faster than walking, five times faster than swimming, and three times faster than running. Now that, again, is at equivalent levels of oxygen uptake, which means you are working just as hard. Okay, and so somebody, they have those little My Fitness app things that track your exercise, oh, yeah, and a yeah. lot of them don't have rebounding or even trampoline right. in there. What could they possibly put this equivalent into there for, so they, they can track their exercising in minutes? Uh, basically, yeah, just know that it's going to be very efficient. It's not going to have the jarring effect. You're going to have G-forces working on the body, not just muscles. Um, you're not just opposing gravity, you're opposing the forces of acceleration, deceleration, and gravity. Those are three forces working on the body instead of just one. Um, so it's going to be extremely efficient. And as far as um, the, the Fitbit type watches and things like that, uh, count, do a count or do a time. Say that you want to, this is what I do. If you put it on for a certain period of time, see how many times you can have your right foot come down and hit the cellar sizer within that certain amount of time and then the next time see if you can increase it. So it's the intensity, not the amount of time 
that really gives us a benefit. So seller size is very intense. And it's kind of hard to track in those apps because it depends on the intensity that the person is seller sizing. It at. absolutely and so that is. Makes a difference. That's okay. right. All righty, K. Okay. Here we go. Um, okay, so people are asking about how to tight tighten our chins. <laughs> <Their> chins. <laughs> it was really cute because what even said, how do, how do you, what's the best thing for my chins, plural, and it made me giggle because <laughs> I can agree. And so how did it, how can you tighten with aging facial and the sagging under the chin? In the, in the seller size DVD, seller size, the ultimate exercise, I show what I call the, the natural facelift on the seller sizer. When you tighten muscles and you hold the position and then you seller size, the skin has no option, and the collagen um, will start to adapt around that muscle and to firm up around the muscle. So to what degree it's going to affect, a lot of that is dependent upon a lot of different issues, uh, elasticity, age, flexibility of the skin, etc. But we can always work on the muscles, and the muscles can help to burn off the excess fat in this area and tighten and tone this whole neck area. The head's anywhere 10, 15, 20 pounds if you have a really big head. And if you take that head and you tilt it backwards a little bit, all the muscles in your neck and underneath your chin tighten to hold your head up. Well, on a cellar sizer, we're going to tilt the head while we're bouncing. And as we do that, the muscles will... You came apart. Sorry, folks. I came apart. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let's try getting that back on again. Okay, so I'll hold this. Um, so the muscles have to hold the head up as you're bouncing up and down. And those muscles have no option. They have, to, they have more weight on them. So that increase of weight is going to cause them to tighten, tighten up in this area. Okay. All right. Can cellar sizing um, help with hormone issues? If so, which exercise do you re recommend for that? Is just overall? Yep. The health bounce, the baby bounce, the moving up and down, thyroid, adrenals, endocrine system. Everything is gently being stimulated just through the moving up and down. Remember, you're weightless over 100 times a minute. When you're weightless, that's when circulation, communication can flow through the body. Now, as you come down, the G-forces slow you down, but it's weight-bearing. It's causing a stimulation to occur on all the internal organs and connective tissues and ligaments and tendons and um, brain activity is all being stimulated through these different movements up and down. So it's literally whole body. The whole body is collectively involved all the time. Even if you also, the angle of your body in different positions, all you're going to do is become strong in an altered position, but the rest of the body is still involved, and that's unique. See, most calisthenics and exercises that target certain areas limit the effect only to that one particular muscle group or area, but when you alter the angle of, of your body on a cellar sizer, the whole body still has weight on it. We just focus it to certain areas of the body. It makes it, to me, it's the most effective, most efficient form of exercise available. All right. Okay. So this um, gal is 37, and she's a mother of three. She's got arthritis in her knees, and it uh, looks like a stress incontinence, so pretty bad. Um, she's having problems. She's unable to jump or leave the mat or the rebounder without obvious problems. Is there any way she can improve the fitness and lose weight without suffering from the above problems. I think with her case, it just takes time. Yeah. Doing the well, Kegel exercises like you, you well, we talked about, that's yeah. exactly right. Mm -hmm. And then working on the knees, we have to build and strengthen the supporting muscles, the ligaments around the joint before we're ever really going to be able to harness in the bigger muscles of the body for increasing metabolism or burning off calories. And so the dip, and we talked about the knee problem issues, and, and I think it is in one of the weeks. Yeah, yeah I'll just refer yeah, to that. Yeah, but just standing and rocking side to side, hips, thighs, both sides of the knee, or just walking in place, pushing down into the mat. That's the whole front part of the knee, and it's also working the thighs until you can get strong enough that you can do it more with more intensity. All right. Okay. So. 
This is one of my favorite questions I saw on here today. Are you ready for it? No. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Should a bra be worn when exercising, oh. or does that reduce the benefit of exercising breast tissue? That's a great question, and it's totally and completely dependent upon how well endowed you are. Because if you are pretty well endowed and you're moving up and down, the movement can be too extreme for the little protein fibers that run through the breast, and it can actually break those protein fibers. When Dr. Kenneth Cooper exposed the world to the idea of aerobics and men and women were going out and hitting the, pounding the surface, it was very common for the movement up and down, the jarring to actually be damaging to the abdominal rings in men, um, the uh, vertebral joints, the, uh, the breasts, the heart, the knees, because of the ballistic impact. Ballistic impact can be very damaging. On the cellar sizer, you can wear a support bra or, or a sports bra, and as you move up and down, it'll help hold you in place, but then the, the weight-bearing activity can actually firm the connective tissues in the breasts up. I know that for a fact. I know that's what happened to my wife. She experienced the same thing. So it literally starts to tighten the tone. We've heard about it through many other people and, and, and women as well. So you can enhance that by tightening at the chest, having that support and moving up and down so that it's weight bearing. So those protein fibers become more resistant to the weight, they firm up. Okay, so for those of us who might give ourselves a black eye if we run down yeah. the block without being properly <laughs> strapped in there, we, we should be doing that it, to get the best effect from cellar sizing then, right? right? With, good, okay. with good support, yes. Alrighty, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, I, I think there, okay. I think we're just, to our neck question. So I am okay. gonna ask you one specific question that here, and then we're just gonna kinda start going down the back and talk about a few things. And this is what we'll specialize in here on this week 12 today. All right, need exercise that will put my neck muscles back in position. Head is constantly bent over and looking down. Okay, it's important to remember that the skeletal system cannot support itself. It is supported by the muscles and ligaments. When those muscles become weak in the shoulders and then the neck, you'll see gravity start to win. And you'll see people with their shoulders drooping and their, their heads drooping. And a lot of that has to do with weaknesses in the supporting muscles and ligaments. I remember a lady who called me up who told me she was so excited because she'd been cellarcising for a period of time. And every time she stood in front of her mirror um, by her her clothes, she had one of those mirrors in her closet, that she would look over and she'd be kind of bent over like this. She started cellar sizing and one day she looked over and she noticed she was standing erect. And she called me up to tell me, she's all excited. Well, these muscles here help support our posture. Now, working with a chiropractor is a great idea because they're going to put the bones back in alignment. Now we have to work on the muscles and ligaments to help support that alignment. So the chiropractors that I work with will do an adjustment and then they'll have, when appropriate, they'll have their patient get on the cellar sizer and just gently bounce up and down. You're not favoring one side of the body over the other. So as you're gently bouncing up and down, the muscles are flexing around the new alignment. If they're tighter on one side, they're going to start to loosen to support the muscles on the other side. And it expedites the whole healing process. So doing massaging to loosen up those muscles while you're gently moving up and down on the cellar sizer, which moves fluid up and down so that you can push that fluid in between the vertebral joints and loosen up those muscles to get that flexibility. Um, working again with a chiropractor will expedite the, the healing process. And in, if it's because of osteoporosis or weakening of the bones. Remember, cellar size is also weight bearing without jar to help promote osteoblastic activity to help build up the bone density. And we've had some incredible stories that you can read on our, our website with regards to, to um, um, the actual bones and skeletal system. Okay, so you've talked about the neck. Let's look at some exercise techniques that are good for the neck and then across, the, that's your upper back right in there. And then let's talk about things that are good for the middle 
and then the lower back and then let's spend a few minutes talking about scoliosis and the sciatica which good i haven't had scoliosis but i have had sciatic nerve problems so okay it'd be nice to know let's do it i'm going to be on this for a while so i'm going to kick my shoes off and let's start we always begin health or baby bounce just like this relax everything gently move up and down until well, our objective here is to increase flexibility of the tissue this is far more efficient far far more efficient for anybody in in sports and athletic activities in my opinion um, than stretching stretching can actually tear especially when the muscles are cold cellar size moves circulation through the body while it's gently massaging the tissue um, so it becomes more flexible and it warms up and so after we're warmed up and we've opened up the circulatory system and the channels the tissue the lymphatic system is pulling that circulation between all the tissue spaces the bones and joints the wake-up call is what i call this then we can start to focus on different concerns now with the neck area holding your your fingertips underneath right where the atlas is and where the skull connects to it you're kind of pushing up and doing little massages now you may notice some tension there um, that tension can build up and cause headaches uh, and other issues but as you massage it and moving up and down you'll find that that tension will start to go away and see how much better you see see how much better you feel so those little movements up and down you can work down the vertebral joints and you can actually tilt the head slightly while you're doing it tilt the head slightly the other way so that you're massaging the muscles and you're helping to move that fluid between the vertebral joints back to the disc and we'll talk about disc in just a moment now those are some of the very basic movements you can accentuate that by doing movements where you take your hand put it over your head gently drop your head and gently bounce you don't have to overstretch you shouldn't <laughs> this is gentle gentle movements you don't want to irritate a nerve or it can set you back a little bit but cellar size is still very forgiving so we gently move this direction and then we can take our head turn toward our shoulder put the hand on the back gently pull down while we're moving up and down and you'll feel that stretch again you don't have to overstretch but you if you have an issue you'll definitely feel it take your hand do the other side same way and this is after we've massaged it and we've increased circulation and then back here and you can do several repetitions of that I end up with gently helping to move that circulation again to restore the homeostasis but see how you feel when you're done I, I I would notice when I first started doing that tension right there at the skull and the atlas and you could push up on it and you could feel it and doing this just helped to loosen everything up and increase that flexibility it feels wonderful so on the shoulders as we're working our way down we talked a little bit about some of that those movements for example sticking your elbows in front if you have a bad shoulder you can support it with your hand move it up most of these are not all of it but a lot of this is featured in, in the DVD cellar size the ultimate exercise you can take your elbow stick it up over your head gently bounce up and down for a few moments stick it out to the side gently bounce up and down for a few moments and then back in front so we're opening up the rotator cuff and and the shoulders now for the scapula or shoulder blades which is another area of concern and often we end up working with shoulders when the problem is in the scapula and we're not going to solve the problem in the shoulder while there's still a problem in the in between the the shoulder blades so by opening that up we put our arm underneath and just kind of stretch a little bit you'll feel the stretch in the shoulder if you have tension there and it helps with the the scapula as well and then you do the same thing on the other side and gently pull that direction um, don't overstretch you don't need to Keep, when you get to the point where you feel the stretch and you're still gently moving up and down the cellar sizer massages the tension away you don't have to tear or pull or do anything crazy the cellar sizer is massaging so that's one things like this help to open up the scapula and the shoulder as well giving yourself that bear hug and then taking the elbows and trying to touch them behind you 
if you're <laughs> don't do that aggressively if you do it's a good chance you're going to pinch a nerve and if you do that it's going to take a few days to go away so do it gently and, and our objective here is to open things up but it's going to take a little time because we don't know how close a nerve is to um to stress or tension or to another vertebral joint and we don't want to irritate that we want to open it up and then we'll have more flexibility and that's what this is designed to do so that's the upper back another movement which is really really good for the upper back uh, upper back and shoulders and i equate this kind of like with the dog that has um that's upside down and it's twisting and moving all around because it's getting their their back very flexible and keeping it flexible i'm sure it feels wonderful we don't generally get on our backs and squirm around like that but on a cellar sizer, we can pump circulation up and down as we're moving up and down. And this is on our DVD. And just drop the shoulders and lift the knee up and down. It may look a little strange, but let me tell you, this movement, I do it every day. Because I, I know what it's like to have back problems. I used to have them. So that, that movement is going to open up the, or loosen the muscles. And over time, it opens up the vertebral joints. Now, it's not unusual to have a herniated disc. You know, we, the things that we can do, that's, discs can move. They can, they can expand at times, they can contract, and they, they can move based upon um, our activity or something that we've done. To help open that up, think of a, and this is true with the neck as well, a, think of a disc which is in between the vertebral joints that's what helps to keep the distance from the vertebral joints. The nerves come out between. If the disc shrinks, we get more pressure on the vertebral joints. We can irritate a nerve. We can do something because we're too close to the nerve. Our objective is to open up the vertebral joints and increase circulation to the disc. Now, a disc can be equated to a sponge or similar to a sponge. When a sponge dries out, it shrinks and becomes hard. But what happens when you apply more water to that sponge? It starts to get soft again. It starts to expand, right? Well, the discs are very similar. It's called imbibition or imbibing the disc with synovial fluid. The increase of fluid to the disc, which most people don't know how to do or take the time to do, the increase of circulation to the disc can help imbibe that disc with more fluid and it can literally start to expand again increasing flexibility between the vertebral joints. And that's our objective. So by taking my elbow, sticking it up over my head, leaning to the left, I think it's maybe right on their screen, huh? Okay, leaning to the right or the left. And as you open up the back, you stretch, you open up the vertebral joints. The moment you feel any tension, we stop. Hold the position, just gently move up and down. Allow the movement again to help massage the tension away and you'll become more flexible as you do it. And again, it takes time. It took me, and I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I had to learn the hard way, but it took me a couple years to really build up my back. But when I was done, I was not only more flexible, far more flexible. I was also three quarters of an inch taller, which I didn't believe. But I've been measured by three doctors and one attorney. So it's, I, I share it and I'm not the only one. We've had people who have lost an inch in their height and since cellular sizing have regained it again. So we don't know all the reasons why. It could be alignment, it could be part of it, it could be uh, increase of circulation to the disc, but we know the end result has been we have more flexible backs. So when you're done with that side, you do the same thing the other way and gently move up and down. And it's working all over the back the shoulders, the scapula area, and then we work on the lower back. Now the lower back is where we're told up to 80% of Americans are gonna have lower, lower back problems to contend with, and I used to be one of those. So by taking our elbow, same position, lifting it up, stretching, and then taking the right leg, for example, and crossing it in front of the left leg, I'm starting to open up the lower back. Now, if you have stress or tension in the lower back, you will feel that movement. I'm not feeling anything right now. That's a good thing. <laughs> but, but when there is stress or tension there, it helps to open that up. Take the 
left elbow, same thing, tilt, gently bounce and cross in front. And you'll feel it if you have tension there. And over time, it starts to loosen that tension. I end up from that point, I lift the heels up and down and I do a gentle twist. As you're, and this is part of my daily routine, this gentle twist for a lot of reasons. But the gentle twisting, it's similar to doing things where you're working the upper back, but now you're working the lower back. You can work the upper back just by lifting your arms up and doing it as well. But as I'm gently twisting side to side, I'm increasing flexibility, loosening up stress or tension. And the movement up and down pumps circulation, which as I twist, the muscles help to push between the vertebral joints to the disc. So as the muscles loosen and the discs expand, it's, um, it, it helps the body become more flexible. It's interesting because often when I do demonstrations and chiropractors have done the same thing, I'll sit someone in a chair with their back up against a chair, lift their feet up and examine their legs. And very common, it's very common for one leg to be shorter than the other. But when we get on a cellar sizer, we're not favoring one side of the body over the other. We're moving them down equally. So if the hips are out of alignment a little bit, which is very common, and we're moving up and down equally, hips start to drop and move and the muscles start to stretch. And then when we test them again, and we've done this hundreds of times, we test them again, their legs are almost equal, if not equal. And that's another testimony of the benefits of cellar size. I'm gonna show you a couple more that, that you can do, which is more of um, a new video that I'm, I'm working on that will have a number of movements like this, but this is one of them. And it helps with the back as well. And we can start off by bending at the knee a little bit and grabbing the cellar sizer frame itself. So we bend at the knee, we grab the cellar sizer frame, and then we start to slowly lift or lift our knees up. And, and you may only get this far, but if you get to the point where you can just stretch the legs up and gently bounce with my legs straight or bent, if that's what you can do, that's okay. You're starting to loosen the back and the hamstrings all, all the way up and down the back of the, bay, the leg. Now you can do a variance of that by bending here, taking and leaning to the left and just stretch one leg if you can't stand up straight. And you'll feel that stretch in that leg. If you lift your foot up, you'll feel it even more. And then you do the same thing the other way and just kind of lift your foot up while you're gently bouncing. See, that bouncing makes all the difference in the world because it's constantly increasing circulation and flexibility of the tissue. And then end up just gently stretching, gentle health bounce for a couple of minutes to restore homeostasis, and you're done. Now, Christine, we're gonna talk a little bit about an issue you shared with me today. Because I asked her, I said, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, and she said, oh, I've, I've had a rough, rough time um, because of having a hard time sleeping. I don't sleep. Okay, and that's... Three hours tops, maybe. All right. So. I, I've, noticed, I've noticed in in the years that I've worked with people that often that occurs because if people have ever been on antibiotics or if people have been on um, chemicals, preservatives, additives, things that can compromise the natural bacteria within our intestines, that often they can have a harder time sleeping as well. Um, they say a great majority of our illnesses come because of poor digestion elimination processes. And I, I'm listening um, to that because I know that people that are taking a lot more probiotics or for, in my case, when I have a hard time sleeping, this is what I do. I'm not prescribing it, but it's what I do. Um, I'll take five tablespoons of plain, good yogurt. I'll mix some frozen berries or fruit in, in there, maybe put a little granola, and then I'll eat that before I go to bed. I get on the cellar sizer, and I just, let me turn this back around here. Yeah. I just gently move up and down. Do it for about two to three minutes. Just gently moving up and down. The moment you can feel the pressure at the tips of your fingers, 
There'll be a little throbbing, a little pressure. Now you know you're getting it through all the extremities and different areas of your body. And it can take people, some people a while to do that because they may have cold hands or poor circulation. But as this improves the circulation, you just gently relax your shoulders, back, and buttocks. This is what we do with babies when they're fussy and they're under stress or distress and they just can't sleep. But we gently move them up and down and it is extremely relaxing. Just don't fall off. But it is relaxing. I shared this once at a, to a lady at the National Health Federation I was speaking at once. And I'd gone back there six months later after I shared that gentle movement. And I was, my wife was with me and there was a group of people around. And this lady who I didn't know who she was came running up, launched herself on top of me through the air, literally through the air, leaped up, legs around me, grabbed me. I'm holding her. I'm like, I don't know who this lady awkward. is. I, it was very <laughs> awkward, awkward. I, I, for a moment. And, okay, and then she got down. And she said, oh, I just have to say thank you so much. She said, I used to have a real hard time sleeping. I had to take all kinds of sleep medications. I've had this same story many times. And she said, I started cellulosizing, and I can sleep again, and I'm not, not on any of the medications, and thank you so much. And, you know, I didn't realize that that was such a prevalent problem today until I got older. Um, I just knew it worked for me. I knew that if you had a baby that was fussy, you can get on a cellulosizer and gently move a baby up and down. It may burp the baby we as well. We had a testimonial that just this week, grandkids came over, she had a fussy little one. She got on there with that baby and bounced and sound asleep. And, and someone I've been asked, how long did they sleep? She said, all night long. <laughs> So you're right. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's been so much fun discovering and sharing these things. Thank you, Christine, for sharing that. But, it, but it's true. If you take that um, baby and gently bounce the baby up and down, the baby relaxes. Well, here's, the, here's a, something that's kind of, and my kids, I did that with all of them. Um, but here's something that's interesting is often if a baby's fussy and a parent gets up to take care of the baby and they're trying to get the baby to relax and the they finally get the baby down again, that they go back to sleep and they're just laying there. They can't get back to sleep because they're stressed. But when you're on a cellar and you're gently moving up and down with both of you, it's relaxing for both of you. So that when you're ready, you can put the baby down and then you can go back to sleep as well. So I think that's um, another hidden secret of one of the benefits of cellar size. Okay, so uh, sciatic. Oh, yes. Let's talk and about that. And the scoliosis. Oh, okay. Really quick. All right. The scoliosis, it's obviously it's best to work with a chiropractor because the bones are not aligned correctly, but the muscles are not used to the correct alignment either. So when a chiropractor makes an adjustment, if you can find out from the chiropractor how the curvature is, is, is happening, then you should be able to be sensitive enough to it in your body anyway, because depending on how that curve is, the moment you bend, you're going to feel a lot of stress or tension on one side of the body over the other side of the body. And so as we start to loosen up those muscles and gently bounce, it can help to loosen those muscles up faster, keep them better circulation, reducing inflammation as we promote the whole healing process. For the sciatica, this, this has been something that I was surprised that worked. But my customers over the years have told me that they received enormous benefit in this one. And I, I expanded upon a little bit. Originally, it was just doing the twists, and it helped. And the twisting itself helps to loosen all the muscles that wrap around the hip. But then... I altered the movement a little bit by instead of moving at the, uh, the waist or the hips, just this, doing the twist, we hold the hips straight ahead, we lift the heels up and down, and we gently twist in the hip socket area. The combination of those two help to open up this whole area where the nerve wraps around to loosen up the stress and tension, and we have had numerous people let us know how that had helped them. You know, the body has got an enormous potential for health. And as we learn how to work with it, 
we can improve and enhance this ability to do the job it already best knows how to do. And that's what Seller Size is all about. Okay, so last weekend, we, I, have a, I have a really good routine that I'm doing now that okay. I absolutely love. I know that it helps with a lot of pain. Um, we, our house was flooded with kids this last weekend. No. And, That's uh, what the stress is. Yeah, and so <laughs> I, maybe I should have prefaced that, but um, I, I woke up Sunday morning and got on immediately so I could feel like I could handle my day okay. with the kids. And it met, does make a big difference. So I am gonna start doing it at night as well. I, I, and Good. I actually am gonna try the yogurt thing and see how that goes. Yeah. So yeah. I will just continue to do my routine. And for those that um, don't know it, I'll list it. So you can see it in there as well, because it, it, I don't think we should change. I'm doing really well. Okay, I'm uh, s maintaining my weight, hoping for a little bit more to come down. I actually went dress shopping. Good. Now, this should have been a cry moment for me, but it wasn't a cry moment oh. for me. I actually dropped down a couple dress sizes. I was excited. In fact, <laughs> my sweet husband that's here with us today was like, that's a good thing for him. Yeah. If I'm happy, he's <laughs> yeah. happy. The whole house is happy. There that's just how it is. So um, I will just keep up with that if that's okay with keep you. Keep up with that. Increase the intensity as you feel better. And it doesn't have to be all the time. But every time we increase the intensity, we increase our met metabolic processes too. Okay. And so that's going to help expedite that. Okay. And so I think we're at the end here. But I'm going to do something. So hopefully he doesn't no. hate me for this. Okay. Okay. So he's always talking about the the ultimate exercise, the DV, that's the ultimate exercise, Solo right? Size, the ultimate okay. exercise. I personally, myself, am going to purchase one of these oh. and I'm going to give it to one of you. Oh. So the way <laughs> I'm going to give this to you is we need to, we are all here benefiting from this wonderful thing that he designed and made possible for us. I couldn't be more grateful, could not be more Thank grateful. You. And I'm just months into it. So those that have been on like Jill and have been here for years doing this tour over and over again, you know, they, they notice this. If you will share this live, so you just have to come in here and tag a few people in it once I post it. If you'll share this with three people, I'll put you in for the drawing. Okay. So like it, share it for me. You, that'll be your comment. And then next week when we come in, we will draw for that DVD and then I will mail it to you with a wonderful little thank you. So well, let's, let's, let's add to that. Let's oh, do it. We're going to add. We're going to do three. Let's okay. do three so we're people. Gonna give three people are going to get this DVD. I want to get this in people's hands. Okay. I want them to realize how important it is to learn some of these other techniques and to just have it within your home. Now I do understand that a few of you do not have the ability to watch a DVD. Unfortunately, technology is headed that way. We're solving that problem. Yes, that we will are. be coming. But for now, until that is available, we're going to give three away next week. So you must share or like this with, share it, share it all you want, but tag three people in a comment here and like it. And that will get you into our drawing for and, next week. And for those of you who are new, you're probably thinking, well, I've seen these things. I can go down to the store and get one. Or I used to jump on one of these when I was a kid. For those of you who are in the know, you already know the difference. But Typical rebounders do not work like a cellar sizer. We're the only ones that have a tridaptable spring design. It's a larger spring, larger diameter in the middle with a ridge that tapers and then another ridge where it tapers. The steel quality in our spring is what makes a huge difference. The mat material is different. If you want to know more about why the cellar sizer is unique, go to our web website, cellarsize.com, or feel free to uh, converse with some of the people who are part of the cellar size family. But we get comments all the time from people say, well, how come I never could get these kind of results on my unit? And I said, well, because it wasn't designed to perform like the cellar sizer does. There is a difference. They are not all created equal. And we offer a 30 day money back guarantee so you can try the cellar sizer and experience it for yourself as well. So, okay. Thank you, Christine. So we'll be back next week. Thank you. Everyone. I'll post so that well, in the seller size group side, you'll post on the other one. I share it all and okay. ask your questions next week. If there were any questions asked that we did not address, I promise yeah. we will make sure that they get addressed and your questions get answered. If you have anything you need to know, I know you answer the phone and you're usually here. Yeah. And, and I don't know how many of you guys can actually call the owner of a fantastic product and talk to him. I doubt I could call the owner of who makes my car and ask him why something's <laughs> not working. So. 
we have such a wonderful tool right in our hands. We should grasp it and take it, and then we'll see you next week. That sounds great. All righty. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.